everyone! My name is Mimi and welcome to my home base story kung saan lagi tayo nagsishare ng mga bagong videos regarding work from home. Kaya naman kung bago kayo sa ating channel, please consider subscribing. And huwag nyo natin kalimutang i-like at i-follow ang ating Facebook page at Instagram. Okay, so guys, virtual assistant jobs. Ito yung isa sa mga pinaka-in-demand na job ngayon online. Pero marami pa rin ang hindi nakakapasa. So, kapag tinatanong kayo, what's the problem? Bakit um, hindi natuloy yung application nyo? Ang usual na nakukuha kong sagot is because kulang sa experience or walang experience ng pag-VVA and most clients require experience. So, today, i-share ko sa inyo kung ano nga ba yung mga tips and tricks kung paano kayo maging isang virtual assistant kahit zero experience kayo sa pag-virtual assistant. Kasi syempre, lahat naman tayo, kahit ako, nag-start ako na walang experience. So, i-share ko sa inyo paano nyo malalagpasan yung competition ng may mga experience na as a VA. Ayan, make sure guys na panoorin nyo hanggang sa dulo para wala kayong ma-miss na mahalagang tips na pwede nyo magamit sa pag apply ninyo. Now, if you are still looking to level up your skills or learn something new, especially in the world of freelancing, you should check out Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community that offers membership with meaning. I have been with Skillshare for over a year now and they are my go-to when it comes to freelancing classes. I especially like this class about freelancing for creatives where they share the whole process from setting expectations, building portfolios, pricing your work, and even managing your cash flow. Skillshare is also incredibly affordable compared to pricey in-person classes and workshops. Their annual subscription is only less than $10 per month. And the good news is the first 1,000 people will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium Membership. And all you have to do is just click the link down below on the description box and pin comment. Make sure you explore new skills, deepen your passions, and explore your creativity with Skillshare's online classes. What you find may just surprise and inspire you. Ayan, so balik na tayo dun sa virtual assistant tips. We're gonna go and dive right in. Ito mga tips na i-share ko sa inyo guys are based from my personal experience as a virtual assistant for more than 5 years now. And also as a part-time recruiter, yes, nag-recruit din ako ng mga co-virtual assistants. Also from the stories or success stories that I've read from different virtual assistants online. Okay, pinakauna guys, kailangan yung maintindihan ko ano ang pagiging VA. You should arm yourself with knowledge ko ano yung papasukin mo. Hindi pwedeng go lang ng go, okay? Bago ka pumasok sa pagiging VA, kailangan alam mo ko ano nga ba ang isang virtual assistant. So, I already covered that in my previous video. But basically, maraming jobs ang isang virtual assistant and... As a term implies, assistant ka ng boss, ng isang boss mo. So, parang secretarial job ito online. And then, number two, ang gagawin mo, browse for job. Para maintin mas maintindihan natin yung market ng virtual assistant, kailangan natin magtingin kung ano nga ba yung mga hinahanap ng mga clients ngayon or ng mga businesses. Kasi, nag yan, guys. Back from when I started, ang gusto lang nila magmamanage ng chat, sasagot ng email. So, ngayon, medyo marami ng klase ng virtual assistant. Yung iba nagbabantay ng online shop. Yung iba naman nagmamanage ng Facebook or ng Instagram. Sila yung gumagawa ng post. So, very different from when I started about 5 or 6 years ago. And, mas maganda yung current or updated ka and the way to do it is to browse jobs. So, magtingin ka na agad ano ba yung mga usualing skills na hinahanap ng isang client ngayon? Gusto ba nila yung magaling sa Facebook ads or yung magaling mag-edit ng picture or gumawa ng mga flyers or marketing materials or may alam sa Amazon selling or sa eBay yan, mga e-commerce VAs. So, iti-check nyo Ko ano nga ba yung mga available jobs ngayon na pwede nyo pag-applyan na malapit sa skills na meron na kayo. At least malalaman mo na kung ano ba yung pwede sa'yo, kung alin yung kaya mo, yung malapit sa skill set mo, or gusto mo 
kasi malaking sweldo, ganyan. So, it's a good idea to know the market. And then, number three, guys, um, resume. Kung decidido ka na na maging virtual assistant, kailangan mong i-update yung resume mo. And if you're really actively looking for a job, one of the first things that you need to do is prepare your resume. Kung fresh graduate ka, ilagay mo dyan lahat ng extracurricular activities mo, seminars that you have attended, yung mga online courses or short courses that you took. Isama mo na din dyan yung mga achievements. No matter how small, they can, you know, uh, make an impact. Depende sa pagka-word and pagka-present mo sa resume. So, those are for fresh grads. Para naman kung dun sa mga no experience talaga sa pag-VA or pag-virtual assistant, okay lang na ilagay yung mga previous jobs ninyo. Pero mas maganda kung maha-highlight mo kung ano yung pinakamalapit dun sa kind na pag a mo. For example, you're applying for an e-commerce VA. So, mas maganda kung ilalagay mo siya yung kung may experience ka sa sales or sa online shop, ganyan. Kasi guys, ito yung tatandaan nyo. Yung resume nyo, this is like the, alam nyo yung pag nagmamall kayo, di ba may mga nakadisplay na damit, yung storefront window. So, your resume is your storefront window. And kailangan maganda or kaakit-akit yung mga nakalagay dyan. You have to highlight your skills, your achievements, or kung may experience ka in other related fields, you can also put it there. You need to package it in a way na madali siyang matandaan. So, maybe one or two pages is okay. I recommend that you use Canva or Word templates. Yung picture na sa inyo yan, it's your choice kung lalagay nyo or hindi. Kung sa palagay nyo ba makakatulong yan sa chances ninyo. Ayan yung sample ng resume ko. So, kita nyo, meron siya mga certain headers. Hindi siya parang isang tambak lang ng information. Para mas madaling may digest nung recruiter or nung hiring manager natitingin sa resume nyo kung ano nga ba yung dapat nilang makita. Kung meron kayong mga sample works or yung tinatawag na portfolio, napakalaking plus nyan, guys. Um, you can add it to your resume as an attachment. Pag may mga ginawa kong previous banners or pre previous logos or any kind of digital graphics, kinompile ko siya and sinama ko siya sa aking resume. And actually, I already tried it. Yung, yung pinag-applyan ko sa graphic designer, they looked at the portfolio and they really like it. And diretso na ako sa final interview. And luckily, I got hired. Kahit na wala naman talaga akong specific experience just as a graphic designer. Again, it's really just a compilation of all your artworks. Parang mini booklet, kumbaga or PDF na pwede nilang i-browse through yung mga previous works mo. Okay? You already know what a VA is and naintindihan mo na kung ano nga ba yung mga hinahanap ng client. Meron ka ng knowledge. Ready na si resume mo. Number four is skills. Ayan. So, syempre, kung maganda yung resume mo, maganda siyang tingnan sa papel, dapat, expectation meets reality. Dapat as a person, meron ka ding ibubuga, di ba? So, makukuha mo yan through skills. So, pwede niya sabihin, Mimi, hindi nga namin alam kung paano magsastart. Eh, wala nga kaming idea sa pag-VVA, wala kaming experience. That is why, this number four, yung skills, kailangan mong pag-investan talaga ng time. Medyo matagal. So, kailangan mong pag-aralan. You need to study. That's it. Walang segue, guys, sa pag-build ng skills. Kailangan mo siya talagang pagdaanan. Even me, hanggang ngayon, nag-aaral pa rin ako. Lalo na kung may mga bago akong kailangang gamitin na software, I still study and read about them. Investment nyo kasi yan, guys, sa sarili ninyo. Especially now na sobrang tindi ng competition sa pag-VVA kasi, you know, everyone wants it. And you need to have an edge or an X factor over others. And the only way that you can do that is kung meron kang skills. Alright? And to build those skills, you need to study, you need to read. Napakaraming free trainings and free information online about virtual assistants. Marami rin ako nakikita na paid trainings. So, nasa inyo naman yan kung anong kaya ng bulsa nyo. Of course, the paid trainings will give the information to you much faster and, alam mo mas compact na nandun lahat talaga ng kailangan nyo. But, kung kailangan mo naman yung budget-friendly lang, napakarami. Dito sa YouTube lang alone, I've seen a lot of 
virtual assistant sharing what they're doing, you know, sharing knowledge kung paano gawin yung certain tasks na required ng clients nila. So, all you have to do really is just research. So, ano ba yung mga general skills, guys, sa kailangan yung i-build? Pinakauna for me is spoken and written English. Uh, most ng kliyente ay galing abroad. And English is the international language. Kaya kailangan confident kayo makapag-English. And whenever you're asked to write something in English, dapat, alam mo yun, maganda rin yung pagka-present niya. You don't really need na malaman yung convoluted words na sobrang lalalim. Yung simple, mas simple, mas okay. As long as you can hold a conversation with someone in English for a long time, like say 30 minutes or one hour or so, then that's already good. Practice your enunciation. I-practice nyo kung usapin nyo yung sarili nyo minsan sa salamin or try it at home or manood kayo ng mga American TV shows para malaman nyo kung ano yung mga usual na sagot nila sa certain reactions. Um, ano pa ba? Read books. Ayan. So, those are some things that will definitely build up your vocabulary para mas maging confident kayong magsalita in English and magsulat na din. Other general skills that you should know as a VA is data management, meaning kailangan magaling kayo sa sheets or sa Excel, and social media management. Ayan. So, everyone is online na ngayon. And one of the ways that you can boost your presence online is through Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, Twitter, diba? YouTube. So, dapat pag-aralan nyo rin yung mga social media na yan na not just for personal but in, on a business level. How do businesses portray or expand their business through social media marketing? So, napakarami ng blogs about that. Very useful information sila lahat. So, if you can invest the time in learning those, then that would also be great. So, those are the top three skills that I would recommend that you learn. Dapat marunong kayo dyan. So, ano ba yung mga software or portals na pwedeng makatulong sa inyo para makapag-practice naman kayo? Siyempre, hindi naman pwede na puro basa lang. I recommend you use Google Apps. Ayan. So, kung may Gmail kayo, free ang Google Apps. Punta lang kayo sa drive.google.com and then i-explore nyo siya. Meron siyang Google Docs, meron Google Sheets, um, Google Slides, and yung pag-organize ng folders. Kasi parang drive siya eh. Alam mo yung storage, online storage. So, try nyo siyang i-upload yung mga um, pictures nyo, then i-organize nyo, gawa kayo ng tracker. Maganda ma-explore nyo yan, guys. Kasi halos lahat ng clients and businesses gumagamit ng Google Drive now. And apart from Google Apps, maganda rin i-try nyo si Canva for, you know, for design and graphic. And Canva is a very, very beginner, baby level beginner friendly for those who are just starting out in design. So, I suggest you try it out. I'll put the link also down below. And then, if you have extra time to learn more, learn about video editing, Photoshop, and project management. So, yung mga apps na yun, um, it will definitely give you an edge over others, lalo na kung marunong kayo. Once the ready na ang skills nyo and feeling nyo, ano yun, confident na kayo sa kung anong knowledge and skills na meron kayo, ready na si resume, ayan, ngayon pwede na kayo mag-apply. San po mag apply Para sa akin, I always recommend Facebook groups because dalawang beses na ako nakakuha ng clients kay Facebook group na, alam mo yun, direct. Walang middleman. So, direct ko silang message. I just followed whatever their instruction is. This is very important, guys. Huwag kayong magpipm ng how to start or I'm interested. Ibasahin nyo yung post, intindihin nyo. Okay? Kasi, comprehension, tinitingnan na agad yan from the very, very start. Naiintindihan ba ako nito? Or magkakaintindihan pa kami? Ba kami? Doon pa lang, makikita na nila kung are you in or not. And I'll show you here an example. Ito yung job post ng isa sa mga client ko ngayon. So, very specific yung instruction niya. So, other usual go-to portals are of course Upwork.com 
wherein you need to, you'll be given some free connects. Pero every time mag apply kayo, those connects will be used up. And then, meron ding Online Jobs PH. So, free yan. Pwede kayong gumawa ng um, account sa Online Jobs PH for free. Tips on increasing the proof ID. Kailangan match lahat ng details ninyo. Pangalan, address, and your ID. And then, what else? Freelancer.com And marami pa ako ibang shiner sa iba nating mga videos on where you can apply as a virtual assistant. So, sana ma-check nyo din yan. So, meron ka ng portal. Meron ka ng mga nakitang job post. Ayan. So, tips in applying. Huwag kayong mag-apply or mag sa isang job lang. Let's say, gustong-gusto nyo talaga siya. Then, go apply there. Pero, be open to other job opportunities. So, hindi lang isa dapat yung pag a mo. Kasi, pag hindi kayo natanggap dyan, then, wala na. Ayan na yun, ba? Unlike, kung maraming mag-reply sa inyo and interested to hire you, then pwede kayong mamili kung alin yung best, ba? Make sure you fill out all your information as accurately and as much as you can fill. Um, kasi yung iba nakikita ko, minsan may mga nasiskip sila. Because read everything carefully before doing or clicking anything. Ayan. Kasi pag mali ka sa comprehension, wala na. Tanggal ka na agad, ba? I-double check nyo bago nyo i-click yung submit or yung final button. Like, na naka-attach na ba dito yung resume ko? Okay na ba to? Ito ba yung updated? Proofread everything and before you send. Some portals, they require cover letters. Nasa inyo, hindi naman siya parating required. Pero like sa online jobs or sa Upwork, you may want to write a short blurb or teaser of what you can do for your clients. So, yung cover letter, medyo customized siya dapat per client. Kasi iba-iba naman yung business ng mga kliyente, di ba? Huwag kayong gumawa ng nobela. I think one or two short paragraphs are already good. What you need to do, and kailangan yung tandaan, when you're creating a cover letter or doing interview is... Huwag niyo sabihin kung ano yung gusto marinig ng client. Sabihin niyo kung ano yung kaya yung gawin para sa business ni client. Mas okay yung kita na nila na, ay, itong tao na to makakatulong to sa business ko kapag hinire ko kasi ito yung alam niya na gagawin niya. ba? Mas okay na instead of a portfolio of you, um, ang ipapresent mo sa cover letter is a vision of what you can do for your client. And so, example nito, kagaya niyan, I can help you set up a commanding presence on the major social media platforms that will widen your customer reach. I'll do this through targeted online marketing. Please see my attached resume. Looking forward to speaking with you so we can talk more about this. Ayan. So, parang meron ka ng call to action na, ah, kung gusto mong matulungan kita, um, set me up with an interview and then we can talk more. So, parang ganun. Parang, um, you're already setting yourself up for the next step, ba? Ayan. So, once guys na nakapag-apply na kayo, ang next na is magiintay kayo, ba? We whether or not you're gonna be scheduled for an interview or a job offer, ba? And pag nakarating na kayo guys sa interview, you're already, kumbaga, yung sabi nila na, you're already one foot through the door. And so, what are the things that you need to equip yourself for the interview? Ano yung mga tips ko sa interview? Um, una, always be prepared. Sa lahat ng bagay, um, preparation is key. You research about your client and their business. Mag-research kayo ano yung mga usual na tinatanong sa ganitong klasing interview. Ano yung mga magagandang sagot na applicable sa inyo personally. So, be ready to be asked about your previous work, yung mga struggles nyo sa previous work nyo, yung mga challenges na, alam mo yun, nahirapan kayo, ganyan, your weaknesses. So, itatanong nila yan. You have to be prepared. And also, kailangan meron kayo mga power lines, ba? Pero huwag naman yung super OA na parang scripted. Yung, it sounds natural coming from you, ba? Kapag interview, guys, be on time. I did a couple of interviews back when I was recruiting. Tapos ako pa yung kailangan mag-intay. Doon pa lang yung impression ko is, medyo ay, baka magka-problema ako sa reliability, yung ganyan. 
So, always be on time. Um, online naman yan, so you don't really need to go through a traffic or drive, di ba? Go commute. Make sure na 30 minutes pa lang, na setup nyo, na, na test nyo na yung audio ninyo, yung video camera ninyo. And then, when I say on time, guys, that means 5 minutes before the scheduled time. So, kalimbawa, ang interview nyo is 3 o'clock p.m. Then, dapat 2.55 p.m. pa lang nakaabang na kayo sa inyong computer. Ayun nga, kagaya ng sabi ko, be ready for a video call. Mas okay yung proactive na kayong magpakita. Huwag na kayong magtago. Kasi for interview, it's like, you know, talking to a wall. Kung picture lang or just a letter lang yung nakikita mo. Some interviewers, they prefer na to show their faces. Pero mas okay pa rin na proactive ka na. Alam mo yun, confident ka sa sarili mo na, okay, you can see me and this is how I present myself. May plus points pa rin talaga yung kapag willing kang magpa-video. And then, don't bring up the salary unless sila yung unang nag-bring up or tinanong ka ng expected salary which, of course, you should already have done your research kung magkano yung going rate. So yeah, unless sila yung mag-bring up ng salary or ng compensation, don't mention anything about it kasi pwede nyo yung pag-usapan kapag na tanggap na kayo during the job offer na yan. Don't be afraid to ask questions, okay? Your interview is a two-way conversation. So hindi sila yung para magtatanong lang tapos sasagot ka. Th that's the old style of interviewing. Right now, it's more conversational. Mas okay kung parang consultation yung gagawin ninyo na itatanong mo sa kanila, what are you looking for me to focus on and help you with? And then, mas maintindihan mo dun kung ano nga ba talaga yung hinahanap nila, diba? Ayan. And then, make sure before ending your in interview, you make a lasting impression. Kasi again, this is a competition, alright? And you want them to remember you. How? You can use a tagline, a joke, or you can ask them and gauge kung how did I do? Or do you think you can work with someone like me or do you think I am the one that you're looking for to help you with your business? Yun yung mga ganyang lines. Don't be afraid to ask those. Okay, so next na after interviews, of course, the job offer. Kung pumasa kayo. So, just make sure be patient. Huwag niyong harasin yung pinag-applyan nyo. Um, the general rule is after a week, if you haven't heard back from them, then you can follow up and check the status of your application. For me, kung two weeks at hindi ka pa nakakarinig from your prospective client or sa inapplyan mo, then I suggest you already move on. This is one of the culture here in the Philippines na kapag hindi ka tanggap, you, you will never hear back. Siguro doon sa mga inapplyan ko before, konti lang talaga yung nagsabi na, I regret to inform you, ganyan. Pero hindi na rala sinasabi yung reason. So, and so ang next, guys, is mag wait na kayo. Whether or not, you will get the job, di ba? And when you do the job interview, um, pwede ka nang mag-negotiate ng compensation nyo. So, yung compensation, it doesn't only involve yung monetary compensation or salary or yung per hour rate nyo. Make sure they don't forget to cover yung mga vacation leave nyo, yung overtime, yung mga bonuses nyo and commissions kung applicable. Kung halimbawa, sales yun. And yung annual raise, like, um, those are some things na mas maganda palang maaga palang nakocover na. So, you don't have to be shy about it kasi tinanggap ka na nila meaning they're ready to work with you and you can already negotiate kung ano yung magiging compensation mo as part of your work for them. If you haven't heard back in two weeks, then most usually, hindi ka na talaga makakarinig from that client. So I suggest you just move on and don't take it personally that there's something wrong with you. Sometimes it's just really the client na hindi nila feel na match na it's a match with you. Pwedeng meron silang may specific na hinahanap na hindi nila nakita sa'yo. So, it happens. So, don't feel so bad about it. Don't be hard on yourself. Sometimes, it's not you, it's them. Which is true. Ayan. So, ang gagawin mo lang is, you know, you move on. Napakarami pang ibang client and there are numerous small businesses or even large businesses who are looking for, you know, virtual assistant. And you just have to really find your match and take it as a learning example like evaluate niyo what do you think went wrong with the last application may sa palagay mo ba may sinabi ka na hindi nila nagustuhan or may nilagay ka dun sa resume or whatever na hindi fit 
for that particular business. So, take it as a learning experience and apply it to sa mga next mong application. So, the trick here as well in, you know, pag apply ng VA is you just try and try until you find the right match for you. And, and if pagod na kayo sa pag apply sa pag VA, let's say it's more, it's been more than six months and it's tiring you down, then maybe it's about time to also look for other online jobs. So, hindi lang naman pag virtual assistant ang um, online jobs. Marami pang different kinds of online jobs. And finding out the right one for you will be one of our next topics in the upcoming video. So, sana maabangan nyo yan. So, guys, again, sana may natutunan kayo sa video na to. Kung nakatulong to sa inyo, please share with other aspiring virtual assistants. And please also follow and like our Facebook page and Instagram page. So, that's where I usually post the updates for our channel and yung mga daily snapshots ng pagiging isang home-based virtual assistant. So, sana ma-follow nyo yan. Lagay ko na lang yung links below. And I will see you guys again for another work from home video next time. Bye!